Hey folks, how are we doing? It has been raining non-stop for the last two days, but I'm not complaining because the ground is parched and it really does need it. However, we've got this tiny little pause in the rain <laughs> and I've legged it out here because I wanted to have a chat with you guys about the gear I'm taking on my next adventure. I leave tomorrow and the walk I'm doing is the Two Moors Way. So it's 117 miles from Wembury in the south of Devon. You then head up through Dartmoor, through Middle Devon and then up through Exmoor and you finish at Linton and Lynmouth on the north coast. A pretty dramatic ending to a wonderful walk. Now I really feel like I should have done this trail already since it's kind of my local one. I'm, I'm based here in Somerset set right on the Dorset border actually and uh, you know I love living in this area I love the the access to the coast to the Quantocks to Exmoor Dartmoor and this walk for me kind of really combines the two to, two together and I'm so excited to head out really hoping the weather might clear up a little bit because it has actually been quite torrential nevertheless I think it's about time we have a look at what I've got in my pack so I'm doing this walk in seven days I think shows how organized I am. <laughs> my itinerary is in the description below, as is my total pack weight. I'm still making a few changes here and there, but what you'll see is if you've watched any of my other packing videos, it's pretty similar what I carry. I mean, this is what works for me. Uh, I get a lot of messages about lightweight backpacking stuff, and it just, that's not really my thing. I'm about being functional, practical, and of course I have to carry like seven to nine kilograms worth of camera gear. So it's not really very easy to go lightweight. Um, it's kind of a trend that you know really works for a lot of people but it's just not for me i enjoy packing up and having a big pack and looking the part and feeling the part and that for me is part of the spirit of backpacking because it is backpacking it's otherwise you look like a day hiker and what's that about anyway you know go you guys with your lightweight but please don't say that i should be because i'm very happy with how i work anyway it's drizzling let's go so we're going to start then with the pack itself this is my osprey exos i'm really loyal to this pack there is a new generation out um, check out my review for that one if you're interested in that but this pack works for me it's got the scars to show it's done the adventures and it's rough and rugged like me so i love this pack it's 48 liters and it, as you'll see i've got plenty of space to fit more stuff in here so for seven days a week, I even use this on the coast to coast, which was 10, 11 days. Uh, this works for me. You know, if I'm talking two weeks plus, I'll probably take my 58 of exactly the same model. So it's worth noting, check out your backpack, make sure you've got something you're comfortable with and you know how it works. So we're gonna start with the top pocket then. What I've got in here is, first of all, a packet of tissues, mind blown. <laughs> so I'll pop that one there. And I've just got a couple of spare uh, Ziploc bags just because they're really handy actually to put things in. And you know, even just like loo roll after you've been for like a wild wee, you need to pack that stuff out, folks. Um, what else? So another Ziploc bag, this one's got sun cream in, it's got uh, some heat rub and ibuprofen gel and also some bite and string sting relief. Uh, I have a trap injury, so it's vital I carry these tubes. This is weight most people wouldn't have to carry bar the sun cream and the sting stuff. So um, it's just something I have to carry as a precautionary measure to ensure that my back is as well as it can be when I'm on the trail. Uh, next up, I've got this dry bag, which I haven't actually packed very well, but in here we've got my, oh, first thing first is just like a little New Testament, something to read. I've got my wallet, which I haven't stripped down to its bare necessities yet. Um, I always carry cash with me on the trail. I normally spread it out in different places throughout my pack and just get it when I need it. Uh, next up, MP3 player. Again, a lot of people don't like to take that, but for me it works. Um, what do I need to be aware of now that it's raining? Not much, it'll be all right. <laughs> and then I've just got a few electronics in there, such as a portable charger and just a, a multi-port USB plug so that I can charge, for example, my MP3 player and my phone at the same time. So it's just worth kind of thinking about those. The lead that I use uh, is standard for kind of all Android phones and stuff. And it's great for me because it's really long. Sometimes I've stayed in campsites um, where like the seat's like <laughs> half a meter away from the charging port. And if you're wanting to sit with your phone, then it's quite nice to take a longer lead. So that's something worth bearing in mind, uh, especially if you're doing something like on the continent, like the uh, Camino de San Diego, you'll be in lodges. And again, like having a port down here and you can charge it if you're on the top bunk. It's quite cool to have a long lead. Uh, just hand gel, I keep that in a separate packet for obvious reasons. And that's it for me on the top pocket. Then we'll come onto the underside. So we've got this mesh pocket here. It's not stretchy, but it is mesh. Uh, I've got a tube of high five tablets. Normally I mix these up. Uh, so this one's, what is this? Tropical flavor. 
I, I actually really like this one. But then, I, you know, I mix in berry, I'll mix in the green slime as I've aptly named it. <laughs> uh, but these are electrolyte and magnesium tablets. Some of them have got caffeine in as well. And they're just a really great way to ensure that you're getting the sort of minerals and vitamins and, and the electrolytes, obviously, that you need when you're on the trail. I will often, especially on a shorter trail like this one, mix in multivitamins as well. So I'll layer it. So I have an electrolyte and a multivitamin for every day. So I'll take those two and then the next day I'll take two and the next day I'll take two. So it takes quite a bit of planning ahead. But once you know what works for you, what your body needs, it's actually all right. Uh, up next is where I keep my spork. You never know when you might need an emergency spork. <laughs> and this one here is my head torch. Um, I don't always take this bag because it's actually quite a bulky bag. Uh, and my head torch here is the Petzl Actic. So I've done a little review on that if you want to check it out. I really like this torch. It's quite lightweight for the, the strength of the beam. And I also keep some spare batteries in there. So that's my head torch. And that's it on the top pocket. What we're going to do now, I think, is just move to the front and then we'll look at the inside. So this front pocket's a nice big stretchy thing. Um, what I'm shooting on at the moment is a Canon 70D. I've got my Video Mic Pro and I'm using a Manfrotto tripod. My tripod normally sits here. So if I want to use my tripod when I'm out filming, or out walking, sorry, then I have to take my pack off, unstrap the tripod, put my pack back on, set up the tripod, shoot the thing, come back, put the tripod on, <laughs> and so on. It's a bit of a long process. So um, I'm still kind of adapting where I could potentially keep my tripod, but it's so, so, so important to me, especially with this injury, to have it, have my pack equal on both sides in terms of weight. So for me at the moment, having my tripod sat here, as you'll see right now, um, it just works for me. So that's where I keep my tripod. It's worth noting what that looks like. Up next then in the front pocket, with this walk, uh, I've got kind of my standard notepad. I've got a little Two Moors Way book in there as well, just with some information about the route. And I've also printed out some OS map pictures um, from Walk Highlands just of where my campsites are because pretty much every single night other than the night where I wild camp they're a good mile and a half <laughs> off the route and I'm really hoping this walk this video that I produce with this walk will actually be of some interest to you guys because it's not really renowned for being <laughs> um, friendly towards walkers that want to camp there's not many campsites they're not on route if there are campsites you will have to wild camp at some point so it's kind of a very different dynamic to some of the national trails out there or for example the coast to coast which just caters for walkers you've got the carrier service um, this is kind of a lot more basic it's stripped back which is why i'm also quite excited to really see what it's like actually being out on the trail what's it like living out this walk um, having said that the mapping is not also really not that amazing what i would love is for like an a to z map book to be made on this trail um, but instead what i've got is the official guidebook which is uh, the Citroen one by Sue Vickers, which is highly rated, everybody uses this one. And it's got little sections of the OS map, but if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I like to see the bigger picture, the lay of the land, what is it looking like? And uh, that also helps if you go wrong, you can work out roughly where you are. So the only option I had really was this Harvey's map, which is a one to 40, so it's quite a big scale. I, I'm, you know, I'm happy using 1 to 40s, 1 to 50s, but 1 to 20, 25 would be a lot better because you can really pinpoint exactly where you are in terms of little tracks or gullies or, or anything like that. But um, I will be taking this one. I won't take the sleeve because that's just unnecessary weight. These are quite rustic and, and hardy. Um, I will be taking my waterproof cover just because I think the forecast is due to be quite showery like it is at the moment. Um, so that's in terms of guidebooks. Those are the things that I'll be taking there. So the Harveys, the guidebook thing and just a notepad and stuff. Uh, in here, I've got my flip-flops. These are not the lightest flip-flops in the world. I could just get some plastic ones, but I like these. And uh, since I've used them on every trail so far, they've just got to come with me. I can't backpack without flip-flops, I'm afraid. So, <laughs> but I am genuinely considering just picking up some like real cheap ones. Uh, the nice thing about those is they're kind of organic and uh, I know that I could recycle those afterwards. Whereas if I just get some plastic thing that'll probably break on me like two days in, that's just going to go in the landfill and I really do not want that. <laughs> uh, plastic bag, always essential. And in this plastic bag, I've got my hat, which is my Iceland 66 degrees north hat. I've got a buff because it's Dartmoor and it's probably going to be windy. And I've got some fingerless gloves. I need to get myself some more gloves. I keep losing the odd glove here and there. So I actually don't have a pair at the moment of normal gloves. <laughs> so I will do that. Um, this is a random dry bag. So when it rains like this, I'll normally put my Video Mic Pro in this one. 
keep that nice and dry and then just attached to the pack I've got my waterproof cover this one's larger than this pack needs but it means it can go over the top of the um, tripod when it's sat on the front there on the side then I've got one bottle there we go that is a bottle <laughs> and on the other side I have another bottle this one's a flask they're both filled up that's like I did not expect that okay they're both filled up that's worth knowing my pack feels all right in terms of weight and then also oh, the train's going past wave to the train <laughs> uh, right anyway distractions also um, what I slot into my flask there is my lightweight titanium mug so I don't really necessarily need to take a mug but for me I just like it it's nice because it means if I'm brewing up some some water I can make a brew and I can also make some food in the bowl that I carry as well as you'll see in a minute so it's just good it means I can save a bit of gas and just get things done more efficiently and then I can sleep which is always the goal right so I've just put those two back in there so I've got water water and I'll probably take another really lightweight plastic bottle that I can just recycle at the end of the walk so that's my plan in terms of water carry a minimum of two full uh, but potentially the three depending on the length of the day and of course the weather conditions as well it's really important to stay nice and hydrated uh, right on the inside of the bag then what we've got straight away accessible is my mountain equipment La Hotsi jacket it's a waterproof jacket it's got pit zip so it's really great for kind of muggy days like today where you need to breathe uh, and that's just my go-to it's quite nice as well because it's red and if something did happen in terms of an emergency especially as I'm on my own I'll be a little bit more obvious if I was to put that over myself so that's my jacket next up almost as important as sleep is food <laughs> so this is my food bag let's have a look at what I've got in here so this is fully packed ready to go for oh I packed it away nice and tidy as well never mind we'll have a look um, <laughs> that, is, that is exceptionally organized I'm quite impressed with myself um, so what we got then in here for seven days worth of walking and so that is Wednesday no Tuesday Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday Saturday, and five nights five nights on the jail yes five five or six nights I can't even count um, so this is what I'm carrying so what we've got then is normal tea bags and mint tea bags the normal tea bags I carry in the hope that somewhere I can purchase some milk and then just live in the height of luxury of tea and the, the mint ones are when I just feel depressed and I need to drink something so I've got mint tea bags there um, then what we got is breakfast so I'm just taking so also easy porridge oats. I'm going to be quite sad on this trail because these are just plain. I would really like, oh, I could take some sugar. There we go, sorted. Thanks guys, you're awesome. So <laughs> these are plain porridge. Normally I have like the maple syrup ones and they just give me a bit of a kick in the morning. Uh, but I bought those and I need to use them up. So I've got plain ones and I've decided I'm going to get some sugar sachets and pop them with that as well. Uh, then what I got, this is coming out at random, is I've got three latte sachets. So they're for my longer days just to reward myself and go, well done, Abby. You got this come on <laughs> um, up next I'm taking one ration pack I think I might not take this I might exchange this for something else this one's pastoral fungi 600 calories really great balance of carbohydrates fats and proteins so that's that one it's not the heavy not the lightest in the world this one weighs 143 grams so I'll probably eat that quite soon on then I'm going to take kind of your classic backpacking staple uh, some instant noodles and what I'll probably do no I won't do that actually I was going to suggest just putting them together in one bag but I'll just end up eating them both in one go and that's not a good thing so <laughs> I've got them both here so I've got those I never use the MSG containing sachets I literally just eat the noodles on their own and I actually quite enjoy that so I've got a couple of these one packet contains four nearly 500 calories believe it or not so that's just heavy carbs just literally pure fuel right there and then oh I've got some more noodles here different brands and then literally a couscous so what I might do is exchange the couscous for the ration pack just because you know the days I've got on this walk are not crazy long they're quite comfortable for me so I'm more than happy just to sit with a couscous in the evening uh, and then basically what I've got is a wonderful array of cereal bars <laughs> which is my fuel um, I will also be taking some hard-boiled eggs uh, just to cook them up tonight and just whack them in my bag they'll probably take I'll probably take six so I'll have two a day just extra weight but kind of a nice luxury to get some protein in probably in the morning as well and I'll probably bring a banana or two again just to see me through the first couple of days hopefully they won't get too bruised though uh, so in terms of cereal bars then I've just got these like ginger biscuits I've got these really nice Belvita sort of fruit soft things I've got uh, some Nature Valley bars I've got some raw fruit and veg bars I've got banana loaves those are life 
And then my main sponsors for this project, all the walks I'm doing at the moment are Cheer Charge. They're a pretty awesome company if you're looking to really fuel yourself healthily on the trail. Uh, what I've got here is a chia seed flapjack with banana. And then I've got a cashew caramel, which is a raw fruit bar. And then this one's a chia seed flapjack with cranberries. They've got a huge variety, peanut butter, everything you could ever want. And seriously, guys, they are actually delicious. So I really suggest checking them out. It's Chia Charge. You can see some of the, the footage of the different sort of bars they've got here. And uh, I actually really am enjoying eating them on the trail. I find I struggle to make them last. So that's my food bag anyway. Let's plonk that there. Uh, up next, we're getting there. This is my Patagonia Nano Puff jacket. So it's an insulating layer. It's synthetic, so if it gets wet, so I should still be warm, but hopefully it won't get wet. So that's that one. I don't put that in its own stuff sack inside its chest pocket because it's just easy to cram that in and fill up the spaces when I need to. Up next, this is my clothes bag. You can see I've really, over the last few years, learned to refine this right down. Basically, all I've got in here is a few pairs of socks, shorts, and another t-shirt. I'm just gonna wear the same trousers the whole way. Um, yeah, literally that's it, just socks shorts and a t-shirt and literally two pairs of underpants so i switch pants every three days there you go <laughs> hygiene <laughs> um so that's my clothes bag i'm just trying to keep that nice and light it's not very bulky which is good for me and as i say i'm just going to wear the same trousers and the same top the shorts and the other shirt are for sleeping at night so a lot of people like to sleep in the clothes they walk in but i sweat a lot and i find this very uncomfortable especially if i have stayed at a campsite i want to be able to shower make the most of what i paid for and then change into something fresh so that for me is why I always take a dry set of clothes to go alongside my wet set of clothes. Uh, this one here is my Jet Boil, Jet Boil Flash, pretty loyal to this. All it does is boil water very quickly. Uh, I've got some gas in there, the tripod and the sand. And then I have this bowl, which is a high gear bowl that I sit with it. Um, again, like I could, normally there's a cup that comes with this, but I broke it and I haven't been able to get a replacement. So that's why I bring this bowl. It, it's really quite light. I think it weighs like, what, 50 odd grams. So I'm quite happy with that bowl days I like to say bowl <laughs> um, next up it's all coming out randomly this will probably be higher in reality it's some Burkhouse waterproof trousers and some gaiters ankle gaiters not a gaiter fan but ankle gaiters can be quite essential especially in the morning when everything is wet uh, next up is my Thermarest Venture so this is my roll mat same color as that which seems to attract a lot of little bugs I've noticed in the summer heat um, but I've put a review of that one in the link below, so please feel free to check that out. That's my second Thermarest Venture mat. They've just upgraded and I've upgraded with it because I actually needed to. So I'm very, very happy with that mat. It's comfortable and it's functional. Uh, up next is my wash kit. So I've got, uh, what is that thing called? A towel. I have a towel and um, some shampoo and some foot rub, actually. Foot rub's important. So it's like a mint rub that I put on my feet every single night. I'll wash my feet whether I'm wild camping or not. And then once they're dried out, I'll put some of that mint rub on and just massage them and try and just protect them from blisters. Uh, so that's, that's what I do as a precautionary measure. This is my kind of GoPro packet. So it's full of all batteries and electronic things that I need for my camera. Um, and this one here is my first aid kit, which again will be higher. And what I've got in here is a mixture of tablets and stuff kind of things that I need, things that I can take just in case. And then I've also got uh, like dressings and emergency kind of stuff there. And another thing I've been trying, so I just walked the coast to coast, as I mentioned a couple of times, and um, I use this kind of physio tape on my feet when I started to get hot spots with blisters and it worked really well. It kind of stayed on, it reduced that friction. So I'm carrying quite a bit of that now because it, it just works awesomely for me. So give that a go. It's kind of just physio tape, type that one into Google. It's got some fancy name that I probably couldn't pronounce if I tried. So. Uh, that's my first aid kit. You can see I've got that nice and compact. That's designed by me, made by me. Um, you can buy them off the shelf, but I wouldn't really recommend that. It's good to know what you've got and how to use it. And then finally, at the bottom of my bag is my Rab Neutrino sleeping bag. This is awesome. I'm really learning to love this, actually. Uh, it's quite a new purchase for me, and I've used it now for, well, I mean, I've carried it for over 400 miles, but <laughs> I like this bag. I look forward to getting into it at night, which I think is really important. The gear you carry, there needs to be a reason why you carry it and you've got to have some kind of positive relationship with it so that you don't resent carrying it. Um, everything I carry, I'm, I feel blessed by when I unpack my bag and I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm glad I've got all this stuff. And I use everything when I'm out on the trail, especially on a multi-day trail like the ones I've got coming up. So this is my sleeping bag. I like my sleeping bag. And then the final few things, guys, uh, probably also very important, is my tent. This here on the bottom in the blue dry bag is my Hilleberg Acto. I'm a loyal Hilleberg fan. They're quality stuff. They're not cheap, um, but 
that's done me years and years and it'll see me through even more years um, so that's a one person tent it's really durable lightweight well not that lightweight it's 1.6 kilograms um, but that's what we've stood some of the most insane conditions I've ever been out in and I probably don't want to be out in again so <laughs> Hilleberg Acto check out my review check out my follow-up review I love that tent <laughs> and then finally the hip pockets here so on the right hand side normally I keep yep like a spare piece of food for the day I keep some lips out because I do tend to get sore noses and lips uh, and then I've got a little pen knife as well I lost my one on the coast to coast so guys if anyone finds an Opnil pen knife on the coast to coast it's probably mine <laughs> Um, I also lost a blue glove. People, help me out here. <laughs> um, and then on the left hand side, I keep my compass and I keep a packet of tissues. And then I've also got a mountain training sort of pacing chart, which is quite useful just to sort of work out, especially on places like the moors, how far I've walked in, how long, and when my brain's not working properly, it's useful to have that there. So, guys, that is everything. This sporadic mess of wonderful colours that is my life is everything I take on uh, the two moors way everything i'm going to take on the two moors way so what i'm going to do is just really quickly pop it all back in you get to see this in fast forward which is quite fun and then uh, we'll just finish with a little conclusion and of course have a think now about anything you would take you wouldn't take what works for you what doesn't and please feel free just to comment below so let's get this packed up and we'll come to a conclusion There you have it, packed and ready to go. I'm feeling quite warm, it's certainly very muggy today. <laughs> um, so that's everything, I'm gonna take on the two moors way. It is worth noting, guys, I'm actually wearing my boots, which is some Solomon boots there, uh, fabric boots that I really like. They've got holes in them now, but I'm still just trying to wear them into the ground. And then I'm also wearing my Montaigne Terra pants, so they're the trousers that I'm gonna be wearing when I'm out on the trail. The other thing I'm going to be filming with is my GoPro. So I'm actually going to take two GoPros on this trail just because I've just upgraded to this, which is the GoPro Hero 5. I ordered a 6 and I had a lot of problems with it. It just wasn't working. So I ordered another 6 and that wasn't working. So now I've got the 5 and at the moment I'm really happy with it. Uh, but normally I shoot on a 3 plus, but I've been coming back in, for example, from the coast to coast and the Lake District where I was recently, I had so many corrupt files and I cannot have corrupt files. So I'm experimenting with this one. Hopefully it'll become my new trusty friend. The quality of the footage you should expect to see go up if I can make sure this works and it does its job properly. But guys, that is it. Everything I'm taking on the two moors way. If you've got any questions, comments, feedback, please leave it in the description below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But folks, until next time, enjoy your adventures and stay wild. <laughs>